Hello everyone and welcome to Disco Elysium. Welcome back. This is part two uh, of the ending of Disco Elysium, episode 27, the final episode of the playthrough. I did mention last episode uh, that because I recorded for such a big length of time, it ended up being such a, a long, like four, almost four and a half hour long uh, episode. So we decided to split it up into two pieces to make it a bit more manageable. So um, get snacks, sit back, relax and enjoy a absolutely incredible ending to one of my favorite games of all time uh and i cannot even over I overstate that it's not an exaggeration this game has done wonders um so genuinely get excited for part two of the ending of disco elysium and enjoy yes uh I think, what if I need, okay, what if I need something, right? What if I need more shivers or something to really go with this whole, this whole thing? This one gives me more shivers, the scented scarf. I just need to get as, as much shivers <laughs> as, as possible. <laughs> uh, look at my minus perception stuff. I don't need logic anymore. Get this shit out of here. I need to be perceptive. I mean, we're already, we're already seeing it, so it's not like it's gonna disappear on us, is it? Um, let's see, um, conceptualization, I can't believe it, I cannot believe it, it's real, dude. This is blowing my mind. Just seeing what we've got, that could potentially just give us any sort of checks advantages. <laughs> We do get we do get extra shivers on this shirt, just not much authority. Oh man, this is not what I want to wear when I show up. Being like, look, I I did it. Do we need? Actually, I don't even know if we need shivers to this extent uh, anymore. It's right in front. It's right in front of us. Like we we have it. You know what I mean? We have it. I think we're okay with what we have. Um, but the whole hat thing. We can we can move on from that. Holy crap, dude! What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Something is very wrong with him now. Interesting. It's right there. Can't you see it? No. Nothing. Nothing is what he tried to say. He can't see it. There is nothing. Only the reeds for him. The reeds. And devastation. This makes it very interesting on the fact that he can't see it, which means that it's it's almost like this perfect hiding spot for the phasmid. It's in a place where it can't be seen by this guy. Why can we see it? The creature stands on long stilt-like legs, antennae hanging from his head like a woman's hair, white and curled at the tips. It is no more than five steps away from you. Reed-like tufts stick out of its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss. Like a reel-to-reel -reel machine spinning after the tape breaks. All right, I'm very happy about this. Electrochemistry is low, so it's actually electrochemistry we needed, which is very interesting. But Lena's childhood experience, your corpse will be marked by the stars and the miracle way out in the west. Slowly, with your breath held, you take two small steps toward the phasmid. The creature lets out a series of ultrasonic clicks that swarm around your head like swallows. Like laughter, a sort of happiness. Sweat drips from your brow, soaking your chest. You reek of it, your chemicals. I really wish and hope that we can relay this to Lena and Morel. They need this. They, they need to know. It's their whole life. The tracheal system on the creature's abdomen expands in front of you to take in and expel air. It's smelling you. Hissing and clicking, it extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. Yeah. Right below it now, look it up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. The head of the creature is crowned by reeds and its eyes are like small droplets of water. 
the, the picture is so important. Kim, take the picture. Just don't have the flash on. Okay. No, no flash. Nice. No flash. Good, good boy. There is no change in the insect's motion while it's being aimed by the camera. It remains fixated on you. We got proof of existence. In three. Oh. If it moves, you jump back. I'll shoot. Here we go. I thought he already took the photo. Please don't. No, no flash. One. No! Cuts the air like the blade of a sword. The phasmid freezes in its bright light. Head turned toward the lieutenant. Hypnotized by the flash, it stands frozen before you. Oh, look at that. We have photographic evidence of the of the Insulindian phasmid right in front of me. God damn it, Kim, you gotta turn the flash off. It's still daytime. There's still light out. Whoa! <laughs> The sweat on your arms feels cold as ice, as if you're frozen as well, in the shadow of this great statue of chitinous marble. I got it. You hear the lieutenant whisper as the creature's shape develops onto photo paper in his hand, a polychrome ghost of white streaks against the reeds in the sky, and you, as a shadow before it. Immortalized. Wait, yes. For all time. Okay. I wanted to make sure I didn't know if we would have limited options. That's always the stressful thing when you're like, you don't know whether one choice will take you out or whether, you know. So I was like, before we went into any of those things, I'm like, we need a photo. We need the photo. Slowly reach out and touch the creature's whisk whisker. The antennae hang from a great height. With your hand shaking, you barely touch the tip of the left whisker. On contact, the kiting curls into a spiral like the tip of a poison ivy. Its touch on your fingertip feels cold, ticklish. It is surprisingly delicate, the curly end of the whisker, like a young vine. It's even a bit wet. Be careful, detective. It's moving. Look at your finger. You were right. It glistens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. I'm not going to lick my finger because it, it might be poisonous. <laughs> I'm not going to just lick it. Carefully pet its scythe-like forearm. I'm going to say we got it. Back off. Be careful here. We got, a, we got a photo. I'm happy with that. Don't say it. Are you sure? This may be the only chance you get to touch it. Yeah, but sometimes, you know... It might not be a good idea to touch it. We've already touched its antenna. I don't need to touch a scythe-like arm. It might cut my hand off. We got it, Kim. A shudder pulses through the creature's limbs. It jolts back to life. Oh, nice. Like a record continuing where it left off in a swaying, praying motion. Even the small black pearls of its eyes do not stray from you. This is absolutely bizarre. This is not what I expect. I'm like, we're going to have this murder wrap it up and go home. Wow. It's smelling me. Maybe it is real. The pheromone. Ah, the pheromone that I got sprayed on me by Morel, right. About now, he is ready to believe in anything. My god. The insect's head is crowned with reed-like scales. The shape of seed heads. They rustle as the air moves. The ventricles at its abdomen continue expanding like lunglets. Breathing you in. Your sour, greasy semiochemicals on the breeze. Raise your hand slowly. The insect stops its stridulation, seeming to observe you. Below its crown of reeds, little pinprick eyes detect motion, glittering. The world stands still around you. Suddenly, there is silence. No, stop. Be afraid. Oh, hang on. Put your hand down. The invertebrate comes back to life, stridulating. Okay. Sets of complex eyes follow you, moving in tandem on either side of the insect's small head. Hello, I'm Harry. I don't really know who I am. No reply. A total ancient silence comes from its mouth, along with what appears to be some kind of foam. The stridulations of its limbs continue all around you. Stand on your tiptoes and look more closely. 
You were right. Little bubbles form on the mouth parts of the creature, on its segmented lower lip. It looks to be foaming, slowly. The foam is white, then yellowish. Kim, it's foaming. Careful. It may be poisonous. That's why I did not lick my finger. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt caramel, as the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst, one by one. Tell me, what are you doing? 97% spoke to the hanged man, did not give up on Phasmid, mm, knows of parthenogenesis, and n n nothing. Nothing. Its simple eyes give off no flicker of light. No one is home. The twitches of its limbs are insect-like, unknowable, perhaps without substance even. What the fuck just happened? Look at that. What the fuck just happened? Failed. We... The, it was an 11. We rolled a 16. This has to be a scripted failure, right? Because it's... We, we got 16! It's 97%! Scripted failure? I want to know your mind. It's spread too thin among its limbs, performing incomprehensible operations on the world. And you, looking at it, mouth slightly open. You cannot even imagine what it thinks. How the, how the fuck did that fail? Why is it locked? How did it fail? How did it fail? As you back off, the phasmid also takes a step back into the reeds. Something tells you the next time you engage and disengage, it will probably flee. The arthropod follows you with its antennae. As you back off, the cracks and hisses of the tape that's come to its end grow more distant. Ah, uh, that level up when we put it into a spirit decor? And I don't have a level up and we're so close to one? Inland Empire. God damn it. Investigate the insect until it's no longer there. Hissing and clicking. The arthropod extends its mandible like. And I don't know. I don't know if that was a. I don't know what has happened. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. I don't know if that was a scripted failure or if the game glitched, but we rolled higher than what was required, so I am going and to. Just like that. I am going to reload. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles on the water. I'm going to reload because we saved just before it, okay? We saved just before it. Um, we rolled higher than what was required, dude, and it failed and it locked. I'm, I'm, I'm investigating this, okay? I'm investigating this. Oh, long, still -like hang on. Um, <laughs> so it's its joints. As the insect moves its forearms, it produces a faint hiss. I think this is um machine spinning after the tape breaks. This is a this is a this must be a glitch. It's it's run off in the game, so now it's invisible upon reloading. So I think I have to start the game again, and then it'll actually be there. And then we'll we'll try this. So we don't have. We don't have a skill point that we can put in Inland Empire, but we can increase our Inland Empire um, and see if that helps. But our our chances are already above. Like we have, it should be a it should be a success, which is what's bugging me. Uh, let's reload and try this again. Okay, here we are. So we're gonna put on our ledger for more Inland Empire. Um, so our Inland Empire is at a plus two. Um, there it is, plus. Um, 
Now, what else gives us Inland Empire? Like, we're, it's already at, like, the highest it can be, but I'm just going to put more points in, because why not? Uh, we should be able to pass that electrochemistry check again, no problem. So, we'll leave that as is. But yeah, I'm just very, very confused as to why we failed that check. There's no way that it should be a fail. Because we we rolled higher than what was required. Okay, so we have Inland Empire at plus two. So even more. And there's the Phasmid, right? The crypts, the okay, so the let's do this again. Of its joints. As the insect Approach carefully. Arms, it produces a faint hiss. Slowly, like laughter, sweat. The tracheals hissing and clicking. It extends its mandible-like antennae to greet you. Okay. You're right below it now. Looking up at the colossal chitin of its white limbs. Cool. Okay. Let's have Kim take the picture because we know that it at least doesn't run away when it flashes, which is great. The shrill Ciao. Look at that. Cuts the air there we go. Of a sword. Nice. I got it. He got it immortalized, and the audio is just terrible. Okay, let's yeah, reach the whisker. Is. Be careful. While we're here, let's Boy, look at your finger. You were right. We're not going to lick it. It listens with some kind of moisture. The creature in front of you stays frozen. Carefully pet its scythe-like forearm. The limb before you is incredibly light, like eggshell. It's much lighter than a reed. You feel a soft push could tip the creature over. Its hollow exoskeleton collapsing. Warning! There you go. Warning. Reaction speed. Pull your hand away. It feels, it feels dangerous. It feels like while wow, this is such a delicate and like intimate situation putting our hands up in the air t going like too far on the arms licking the thing it feels like these are these are very dangerous things and our body is telling us to a sudden shiver passes the limb mm. looks like the creature is awakening wave by wave from its stupor some sort of countdown process is happening that's all you have time to think okay another shudder pulses through the creature's limbs it jolts back to life. Maybe it is real. The insect breathing you in. The insect sub no. The invertebrate no reply. All right, here we go. You were right. Little but careful. The foam slowly turns a darker shade, like burnt. So, caramel. it's a the insect moves its mouth parts, masticating. The little bubbles begin to burst. One by one. Very high 97% chance. Inland Empire at 9. This is the maximum percentage. And we rolled higher, so it's not like it, there was a 3% fail. Like, we rolled higher, so I don't know why it failed. Bye. Yes! Yes! There we go. So this is what was supposed to happen. There we go. So it was a medium versus our roll, which is a 19. So the game glitched on us then, right? Because we rolled 16 before, that blows my mind. I don't know how or why the hell that happened, but I am so glad that it is not like a bug that makes it only ever fail. Because that would absolutely kill me because it is speaking to me. I exist. We are actually being spoken to by the Phasmid. I exist too. Tell me what he's like for you. <sighs> if I tell you, what will happen? Then I will tell you what he's like for me. Dude. For me, it's wunderbar. Yes. Holy is the Lord of hosts. And all the earth is filled with his glory. His glory. Now, I will tell you what he's like for me. For me, it is a series of half late images. A kind of darkness. Being intruded upon. Transient, deep, moist. Intruded upon by what? Shapes of plants and animals, and internal sensations. A swarm of sounds, tiny vibrations on the inside of my forearms. All speak of complexities totally beyond my understanding. I am at the end of an era funnel. Weightless, so light. It only feels like something to be me. In truth, perhaps I'm nothing. I certainly do not have a soul. And if I did, it would never ache. 
Oh man. I just love that Kim has a photo and we have the address of Lena because it, it's confirmation that we will send evidence and they will have confirmation. That just makes my soul happy. That makes my soul happy. It does not ache right now. I'm glad to be me, an incredibly sensitive instrument. Few of us can begin to imagine the horror of you, with all of creation reflected in your foreplay. It must be like the highest of hells, a kaleidoscope of fire and writhing glass. Eternal damnation. This is existentialism. Even when you're sleepy, and when you wake, you carry it around <laughs> on your neck. With eyes open that cannot help but swallow more behind the mirror. I feel great, mute, and safe for you. Talking about the necktie, talking about the mirror, like... It was very disorienting at first, but I'm, I'm keeping my shit together. That must be incredibly hard. The orthopods are in silence and meaningless all of you. Know that we're watching. When you're tired, when the vision spins out of control, the insects will be looking on, rooting for you. And when you fall, we will come to raise you up. But from you, banner-like, blossom from you and carry you apart in the sky funeral, in honor of your passing. But not me, because I'm just a leaf eater. In honor of your will, Lieutenant Euphrata, that you kept from falling apart in the face of sheer terror, day after day, second by second. Detective. <laughs> yes? What? Arriving. Okay. I am a detective. So am I. I was born to detect sucrose rewards and semiochemicals. What were you born to detect? I was born to detect you. Yes. No one detected me for such a long, long time. For thousands of years. I dithered. Out of sight. Trapped myself in greenery. This is my masterpiece! No one believed I exist. Almost no one. Until you came, detective. Dripping of blood that smells like strawberries. Across the calm sea. The first in a thousand years. This is my this is a certified bloodborne moment. We get enough insight and we start seeing the amygdalas that are just like hanging around in Yana, which is like, ah, the phasmids are real! We've been granted eyes. Is this a dream? What is happening? No. You're awake. I am real. Light is forming me. This is real. Where does this come from? All this around us, the world? Not even the birds know that. Not even the water lily. I love that we literally do a meaning of life question. What, what the hell is this? Extend your eyes, you know, like, what is happening? And they're just like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. We need to know. Humanity constantly chasing the age-old question, what is the meaning of life? Why are we here? What is the point? We need to know. Perhaps it's sent to us by a god. And then the Insulindian Phasmid says, there is no god but the world that you have created for yourselves. I think we should eat it. Ah. You can put it in your mouth. Or read. Yum yum. <laughs> Wait. So. So. Uh, oh no. We're not going to introduce the concept of cannibalism to the Insulindian uh, Phasmid, are we? So you look like a reed and you eat reeds? Yes. They don't mind. Oh. Have you accidentally eaten another reed Phasmid? Yes. I once cloned myself and ate the little ones. It was winter. And I woke up at the wrong time. It was an accident. Oh, what exactly are you? I am an all-known species of the order Phantasmodia, endemic to the Insulindia Isoma. For the last 350 years, I have hidden in plain sight, masquerading as the reeds, molting, calming myself. Unfolding at night to play with trash bins and boys. Dead. It may have unknown, dangerous biochemical characteristics that help it maintain its camouflage. 
who went unnoticed by the first settlers and the land surveyors of the Suzerain. Also, by the soldiers of the revolution and the officials of the occupation. Even the Samanese islanders who came here first, but did not stay, have not seen me. I have stayed here in through four forms of government and two scientific revolutions, until I was accidentally discovered by a detective of the cities of Malaysia in Rebojol, district of Martinez, March 51. Are you poisonous? Yes. I do not have a star to display, so I use a newer degenerative element to aid in camouflage. Do not worry. It is only destructive over long periods of time. Okay, cool. Doesn't immediately kill me, but if uh, it might if I licked my finger. The deserter. He's been here for a long time. Oh my god! A neurodegenerative alimone to aid in camouflage. The deserter may have seen and has come in contact potentially with the phasmid at some point in these, like, in these years, maybe knowingly or unknowingly. And has, it's poisoned his mind. And that's the neurodegenerative part of his brain that's going on. And he can't see it either. Because his Inland Empire is not leveled up high enough. I feel like that is the connection being made there. Long periods of time. Are you the miracle? No. You are the miracle. Hmm. Thank you. It was you coming from the West. From the Whirling. You were coming. How? The moral of our encounter is... I am a relatively medium life form, while you are extreme, all engulfing madness, a volatile semen nervous system, ominously new to the planet. The pale too came with you. No one remembers it before you. The Nidarians do not. The radially symmetrics do not. There is an almost unanimous agreement between the birds and the plants that you are going to destroy us all. Humankind is a virus and a cancer upon the earth. I do agree with you. Uh, so the pale is human made? I told you the apocalypse is coming and I am the herald of its destruction. It is a nervous shadow cast into the world by you, eating away at reality. A great, unnatural territory. Its advent coincides with the arrival of the human mind. I don't have that kind of power. You're a violent and irrepressible miracle. The vacuum of cosmos and the stars burning in it are afraid of you. Give me enough time, you will wipe us all out and replace us with nothing. Just by accident. How? We suspect it will be something like the oxygen holocaust that wiped out anaerobic life 2.6 billion years ago when organisms first started breathing. Only much worse. Instead of air, you exhale thoughts. There are no trees that eat thoughts. Worse how? Everything your eyes touch goes back there, behind the nose mirror. What if you blink? Are we still here? Please don't blink. What if you misplace us all one day? We'll just forget. Uh, but I want to blink and undo 12 billion years of matter expansion. This is the gloaming I've been waiting for ever since I woke up in the hotel room. Have I always thought this way? No, you're only thinking it now. This is a revelation. This is the gloaming I've been waiting for ever since I woke up in the hotel room. So, it is already happening. One day, one of you will close your eyes and sign and open them to see that none of this. Existed. Kim, am I having a violent epileptic seizure? It doesn't look like that, no. Uh, what does it look like? You're just staring at it. Okay. Then I think I'm having a vision about the final fate of mankind. Okay. Is it somehow related to the case? Um... <laughs> the case. The case is meaningless compared to this. I have totally transcended the case. I think you should back away from the unstudied species now. Yeah. 
I have to say goodbye now. I have no more thoughts. That was all. No, there is one more. Of all the creatures I've met, you are the kindest. Of all the creatures I've met, you are the most beautiful. You beautiful thing, yeah. Thank you. I also have one more thing to say to you. That woman <laughs> from the ruin. Turn and go forward. Do it. For the working class. <laughs> the, the final thought is turn from the woman, turn from the ruin, do it for the working class. I will. She was middle class. It doesn't take a three meter stick insect to tell you that. Disengage slowly. As you're turning away, the phasmid mirrors your movements, stepping on the water, the long limbs carrying its feather weight without breaking its surface. Holy shit, dude. And off it goes properly this time after we've communicated with it. It's real. It is fucking real. No way. And just like that, it's gone. Skating away across the sea's calm mirror like a skipping stone, leaving nothing but circles <laughs> on the water. And something underneath. <sighs> In the place it stood, bobbing there among the reeds. A collection of items. A collection of items. It's gone. It can walk on water? Apparently, yes. Like a water strider. <laughs> Only... I've never seen anything like that in my life. I'm so glad that me and Kim got to witness this and he could see it. If Kim said it wasn't real, I would have been so sad. Him seeing it just makes it that much more special. What's that in the reeds? Looks like a nest of some sort. We should have a look. What's what now? What now? Huh. In some kind of strange, semi-catatonic state. Our suspect is not looking so good. Yeah. We need to check on him. Ah! Oh, it's a okay. Look at this. Ah! The Insulinian Phasmid played with the boy and took the passport. Then what does Class A have to get out of here? Evidence, Class A's passport. Has the portrait for the deserter changed with his eyes? Or am I just noticing different things now? His eyes look, like, uh, cloudy. Phasmid's gone. Check up on the deserter now. Um, dude. Class year's passport. This well-traveled passport with visas stamped in it is issued by the Republic of Oranje. You found it in the Phasmid's nest on the island. You can open it for more details. This passport, issued by the Sovereign Republic of Oranje, is issued to a black-haired woman called Katazina Alazie. Ah. There's some Class year in there. There's... There's... Class year is in there somewhere. A blackhead woman called Katarazin Alasije. Alasije. Butchered that word. Classius hidden documents. From the empty boy. Mm. Look at the photo. It's Clasia, with short black hair and glasses. She looks boyish. Younger somehow. What was this doing in the phasmid's nest? Maybe our man, Mr. Dross, took it from Clasius, or whatever her name was. Hiding place, or... The phasmid took it, and I sensed it do so. I saw something open up the boy with spindly legs. Like a magpie? What a coincidence. Then it would also have collected the other objects, which would be highly unusual. By now, the lieutenant has accepted your unusual methods. I love it when my unusual methods are accepted by Kim. It says, uh, Katarazi in Alasia. She said it would be for Anouk Meyer Smith. Just Anouk a... Meyer Smith. Just another lie. I think you can... I think you can form that word. No, yeah, there's a K in there. I think you can form this with that as well. No, you can't. There's no M. Hmm. Yeah, there's no Ms. Maybe not. Interesting. I don't know who Katarzyna Alasio is, but it's safe to say it's not her. We got lied to again. Yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> we got lied to again. In a way, she's still lying to us. 
She's, like I said, when we were talking to her, like I think she's like she's a pathological liar. She can't help it. She has to keep lying. What's her real name then? I don't know. But it's not Katarzyna Alasia or Klasia or Anouk Meyer Smith. We didn't even scratch the surface with her, detective. Disco Elysium 2, Classier Boogaloo, let's go. Perhaps it's better that we didn't arrest her. Who knows what else she'd be raising in my district by now. Eh, it's better that we didn't arrest her. Nice, Kim. I like that sentiment. The winds are silent. The streets are empty of her. She is no longer in the city of Revachon. Put the passport away. Nice. Okay, let's check up on our... Let's check up on our dude. Let's check up on our dude. What is it? What do you want from me? I can't go. Yeah, like, has... Have the eyes changed? Are they whiter now? Or am I just noticing that now? I couldn't I couldn't tell beforehand. I'm just trying to like analyze it more deeper now that we've had, just had an encounter with a goddamn insulindian phasmid. Something is very wrong with him now. Sir, how could you not see the phasmid? See? Mr. Dras? The man does not respond. He keeps staring. Black eyes glazed over and bulging from their sockets. His gap-toothed mouth shaking. A light shiver passes him, followed by nothing. His hands are trembling, and he breathes slowly. He's going into some kind of psychomotor immobility. The good news is, this solves our transportation problem, doesn't it, Mr. Dras? The trembling mouth appears to sigh. Between this and the broken tire he's used for a boat, I think it's safe to leave him here, while we go and get help. It will need to be medical first, I'm afraid. Okay. What has happened to this man? Old age and shock. I think it's the phasmid. Yes, the arrest and the appearance of the phasmid, the combined stress. But you think it's something more than that, don't you? I think it's the poison. There's much more. Remember what it said when it spoke. Quite a few things about that health check you did on him make sense now. It's definitely toxic, the phasmid. It told me it is. Told you? Yes, good. During your long staring match, I understand. Before, when I evaluated his state, he seemed strangely animated. He was energetic and articulate. After all these years alone, with little hygiene or medication, I would expect worse. Perhaps this animation is induced by something in the phasmid. It does not seem to be animated now it's left. Honestly, I'm ready to believe anything at this point. Maybe it is psychoactive. Mm. I mean, why not? It's three meters tall. He couldn't see it, Kim. It's just the reeds for him. That could be part of the shock. But you're right, something is off here. Mr. Dras. He touches the man's shoulder. No response. Maybe this is how the phasmid has stayed hidden all these years. Then how did we see it? Oh, you mean, whatever does this, does it over time? Mm. Teenagers, kids, drunks, sightings are brief, and hence not credible. But anyone who spends a long time with it... Yeah, you forget it's there. Mm -hmm. Mr. Dross, have you ever seen a stick insect pretending to be the reeds? The, the, the... the doctors will have to look at this. I hope your station has better medical personnel than 57. This is... A little advance for a nurse. He's been here for a long time. Who knows how much of it in its com who who knows how much of it in its company? He did seem distressed when it finally came to arresting him. Like he didn't want to leave this place and the insect maybe. Mm. I have absolutely forgotten. <laughs> I hope I remember all of this. This will be one hell of a report. Thank God we have the photo. Yeah, for the photo first priority. Get that evidence. No one would believe you without it. Yeah. We found some things in the phasmid's nest, Mr. Dross. He stares into the reeds. Your words don't stir anything in him. Perhaps you should... Show him the Arnie's, uh, Arnie's passport. No reaction. Mm. His breathing is slow, and he appears very old all of a sudden. Around 80. This is an old man, at last. No longer a tin soldier, but the broken down remains of a man. Did you take this passport and other papers from a boy on the coast? There. 
spirit. The spirit. He hears us. The spirit? No reply. He's gone again. Try something else? We got him back for a moment. I'm gonna let you rest now, Mr. Dross. The plastic cape flaps around his face in a gust of wind. His back is slouched and his mouth open. The strength has all gone out of him. Just frail old bones in a sack of tracksuit trousers and a windbreaker. Hang tight. We should think about getting back to the mainland to get help. He'll be safe here if we don't take too long. The return. Use the boat to return to mainland. Dude, this is this game, man, like it's it's just nothing quite like it. Like I would never have an experience like this ever again in my life. Um and I'm grateful for that. This is one of the most unique experiences in a video game that, uh, and that's not even an exaggeration. This is unlike anything I have, I have ever, ever touched. Um, this is a, this is an easy, this is an easy 10 out of 10. Uh, an, an easy 10 out of 10. I, I just can't even believe it. It's, it's, it's fantastic. This, uh, this game is incredible. It um it absolutely blows my mind. Um, yeah, like <laughs> I do not have anything else to really say. The dry grass crackles under your feet as you stop. Far away, birds' wings touch the still surface of the sea. What is that flutter? The flock of quail departs. Now more than a hundred meters away, a hundred and two, a hundred and five. Underneath the flutter. On the islet, there is almost no wind, just the light movement of air through the reeds. Bulrushes swaying on the waterline, long dried leaves chafing against each other, like a silent orchestra tuning at the beginning of some major work, of great importance to the few who attend. Oh, we're doing another shivers check again in our directions to the west. A silent hiss. Sea air moving through the needles of a pine tree. To the east. The faraway roar of the city, distant like today's dream. Before it, the sound of sand. The low tide filtered through its grains, a bird tending to its feathers. Ahead. A low hum. The air slowly moves through a concrete box, through its ancient slits and cracks, resonating, hollow. A big building. Beyond that, further north. Air flows out of a pillbox window. There is very little there. The air cossacks flowers on the meadow. Absolute silence. Reeds motionless. Bulrushes motionless. Below the silence? Called the Mamadakwa. <laughs> we also get the cold Mamadakwa here as well. We are way out now. Way out in the west. No, it's just your imagination. <laughs> you can't hear such things. Uh, we've seen an Italian phasmid, and we have a photo of it. Anything is possible. Kim, there's a sexy dark mystery to this case. I told you. Kim. Yes? Have you noticed how quiet it is? I have. Is that why we're stopping? Hmm, wait. I have to listen to one more thing. The lieutenant nods in silence. Open your eyes. Stop listening. Okay. This music, man. The skiff is swaying on the waves by the dock. Let's return to the mainland. Let's. We are done here. The skiff rocks gently under your weight as you get in. The ride back is uneventful and quiet. No sad I am. But for the sound of conversation on the water, there is someone inland waiting for you. Two men and a woman yep. stand on the concrete square of a nameless village, yep. looking at a small yellow boat as it draws closer. The sea is calm. There you go. It's going to be people from the precinct. You reach the jetty and climb out of the skiff. Okay. Harry, we're here because we're worried. I brought him. 
There he is. Oh my god! That makes so much fucking sense! Because of the, it's the wig and the sunglasses. That's so funny. Dude. Yeah. This dude who fucking absolutely hounded us and just kept, like, ripping into us when we called at the beginning of the game. Ah, uh, his face is right there, just obscured by a blonde wig and sunglasses. Yeah, it's the main dude. Wow. Look at what the tide brought in. Says the man without sunglasses. Suddenly his expression changes as he tilts his head. Look at this gathering. Harry, you're bleeding all over the place. You're half dead. Yeah, but we did it. Whatever this is, it is completely unimportant compared to what you've just seen. We wrapped this motherfucking case, boys. This is the man with sunglasses from the whirling in rags. Yeah. But where are his sunglasses? Who are you people? God damn it. Boys and girl, I have completed my quest, my destiny. Wait, you're the man with sunglasses. That's right. And you're bleeding. No one else seems bothered by the bleeding. Bothered by it? Harry, you look like you need a fucking organ transplant. Oh, fuck it. Let's not get into that. This fucking guy. Forget all about this. There's a giant... We're not forgetting about anything. Look at you. What? Who are you people? <laughs> Hello. I'm Trent Heilerstam. I believe we've met on several occasions. What? Wait a minute. I'm your goddamn partner, Jean Vicumar, and this is your special task force. Or what's left of it. Trant is in my special task force, but he had a child with him. Special consultant Trant Heidelstam, battle officer Judith Minot. Judith Minot. Hi. I'm so sorry I called you a horse-faced woman. That was when my character was being so silly and not taking things seriously. We've come to scrape what's left of you off the pavement. Fuck off. I solved this. And have a photo of an Insulindian phasmid. I am untouchable. Lieutenant Kim Kisoragi, Prison 57. We've just come from the island where our investigation led us. The scene is making even him feel as though he has to justify your actions. Mm hmm We might need your help with something later. As if he recalled that he's in fact a decorated police lieutenant and not a naughty boy. That's right, Kim's my fucking boy. But this is clearly a departmental matter, so I'm going to leave you to discuss it among yourselves. No, Kim, you've got to have my back. Let's destroy them. <laughs> Thank you, Lieutenant. It's good to meet you, Lieutenant Kitsuhagi. Letting the Lieutenant know he shouldn't feel embarrassed over the shitstorm that's about to befall you. What is this about? Ari, we want to help you. Trant, I believe this is where you come in? This is the horse-faced woman. I don't know why you named her that. I know. But it was beyond idiotic. It was your fault. You should never address her using those words again. It was your fault, suggestion. Um, I don't quite know what I'm doing here. I was asked to participate as an expert. I think I need to manage your expectations a little. I'm okay. at best an enthusiast in cognitive science. Okay. My background is in something else entirely. I engage in neurology on a merely theoretical level. In fact, I should probably get going. Huh? No, Trump, it's too late. You're part of this shit now. What have you got to say for yourself, shit kid? What does he have to say for himself? He left you to catch the bullets. Shit kid. What an interest in Monica. What's a shit kid? You. Shit kid. That's you. Oh, I'm so sick of you. Despite all that you've done, the deserter, the phasmid, the case. Despite all that I've done? No, because of all that you've done. How did you know I was here? The cafeteria manager you fucked over told us where you went. I saved his establishment and he still betrays me. Strange. He didn't mention that. In fact, the establishment didn't look saved at all. There was a giant I.O. graffito in front of the building. It was on fire. It wasn't on fire, it went out. It was this one junior delinquent. I don't know. It had shit kid written all over it. You, uh, I'm, I'm sorry I didn't recognize you before. 
It's okay. I didn't come here to gloat or to fool you. Neither did he, actually. We're just worried. That's right. Worried. I'm always worried about you. Every time you don't show up to work, or when you do about stink, you're a worry fest. She's worried about you. I'm worried about you. Even Special Consultant Backpedal is worried about you. Everyone worries instead of working. He calls him Backpedal. So, Trant Heidelstam turns out to be Special Consultant Trant Heidelstam. Yes, I'm Trant Heidelstam. I never said I wasn't Trant Heidelstam. Wait, what was up with the kid then? Mikael? Mikael is my son. Oh yeah? Well, what was up with all the interesting history? Spying on me? No, I was just interested in the felt building and the Martinez beachhead. And Mikael wanted to see Martinez. It was a coincidence. So what are you special consulting here? What indeed? I was asked to share my take on some of the more obscure theories developed in Königstein in the 30s. Like partial psychotraumatic amnesia, group personality theory. He's here to see if you're insane. He is smart. Let's move on. You mentioned a task force? Yeah. Major Crimes Unit, under Lieutenant Dubois and Vicomar. Ring any bells? Refresh my memory, who else is in this? Refresh your memory? It's a goddamn Major Crimes Unit. There's you, me, Jude, drunk fucking Heidelstown, and Guillaume Bevy. Guillaume Bevy. I'm technically just a civilian advisor. Oh, fuck you. You're part of this shit show. Yeah, um, first, who's Guillaume Bevy? Oh, that's an interesting story, actually. Guillaume Bevy is a police reporter who joined our team. He was really good. Then he left because he lost faith in your ability to lead the unit. Other people have left too. Good, smart people. People we won't get back. Only me and this really patient patrol officer are still here. And Tron because I'm forcing him to stay. Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde and partial to sunglasses? Is this Guillaume Bevy blonde with sunglasses like you were? See? There. He's getting it. I was impersonating him. Look at me, I'm G. Bevy. It was going to be funny, but then you really did have brain damage. So not so much anymore. He sincerely thought it was going to be amusing. For both of you. Okay, so what does the unit do? Do? It's a major crimes unit. We clear the desk of cases so Precinct 41 doesn't look like the worst station in town. We are shit tier now, Harry. Because of you. We're about to be back on top, my, my guy. They're your posse, or what remains of it. Oh, we f handpicked, hand lost. My posse. We are we finally breaking through on the Insulindian miracle at this point in time, while Apricot chewing gum scented one still has fifty minutes to go. <laughs> the forty first isn't. <laughs> Where have you been all this time? There was a mercenary tribunal. God damn it, Harry. You told us to fuck off. You said we're cramping your style. Your detective god. Fuck everything. All we burn. Detect or die. <laughs> Why didn't you detect or die then? Why would you leave a literal police god? Wait, so you let me face a squad of trained killers alone just to teach me a lesson? It wasn't like that. Fuck you, Harry. We didn't know there was gonna be a tribunal, did we? I said all those things? I'm, look, I'm not like that anymore. Sure. Talk on the town is you're the mouthpiece of the gloaming. Deranged apocalyptic rhetoric. Nothing has changed. <sighs> Fun and games, Jean. Fun and games. None of this is ringing any bells. The bells aren't ringing because you have brain damage. Trant, this is where you come in. How bad is it? Well, he doesn't have visible tremors. He talks without slurring. He can drive a boat, he's standing, reasoning. All good signs, but complete retrograde amnesia. Episodic and semantic. Meaning, you forgot both who you are and the definitions of money, Isola, power, and so on. I did forget things, but I also remembered by getting information. As displayed in the station call, our interactions with him and I don't want to be a snitch, but also mine with him before when Harry did not seem to know who I was. It's all very interesting. I wonder what happens if you go through this game doing none of that. If you just never give any hint that you are 
having amnesia or forgetting anything. I just really wonder how that would pan out in a conversation like this. It's fascinating to think of the alternative directions that you can take a playthrough. Interesting. Yeah, interesting. That's what—that's my favorite word. That's what I say. Yes, interesting. I have my theories, but I would like to hear Harry's thoughts first. Harry, what do you think happened to you? Neurologically, psychologically, and why not socioeconomically? Wait, socioeconomically? You think I'm so poor I lost my memory? Not when you phrase it like that. But I don't think critical theory. I know everyone thinks this is far-fetched pink academia, but still, I don't think it should be off the table here. What? He lost his memory because of capitalism? Exactly. No, not like that. <laughs> I'm not talking for Hedefort's cool here. But Harry, I asked you, what do you think happened? It's interesting that you can go, it might have something to do with an anomaly in the church, a two millimeter hole in the world, and then also I drank so much I lost my memory, and I'm now slowly recovering it. That's the reasonable option, but this is also a potential option with the with the pail. The pail er erased the data of, uh, of things, it can erase my brain. I drank so much I lost my memory, and I'm now slowly recovering it. He is. He's getting better. And I can confirm that he drank a lot of alcohol prior to it happening. I believe he drank. People do that, especially this one. What they don't do is forget their whole life because of drinking. But Detective Vigmer, he has blanked out before. I have? Yes, a couple of times. After some of the more serious benders. One was after the two drunks case, the other when we looked into that mural. So you don't remember not remembering. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> The two cases in your ledger. The unsolvable case and the next world mural. Those were recent. I love to black out after a good case. Those cases were hard on you. Interesting. So at first he dipped his toes into it, prepared. That's where he would have gotten the idea, yes. Practice. And then he used alcohol to get there, so to speak. What do you mean? Well, here is my theory. What if this is an absolutely normal reaction to the world we're living in? What if this is not a significant anomaly at all? Something to be explained, approached as a defect. Look at the sensory input here. Look at the ruins, the neon. Listen to the radio, the multitudes, the people. Live here for 40 years. As a police detective, he's like a magnetic reader on the world team, to borrow a known metaphor. Harry's been pushed flat against it. Total input. Hardwired to the free market. <laughs> he just needed for its end. Okay, Trump, thank you. That's absolutely meaningless. I'm glad we brought you. Will he or will he not be able to work in the major crimes unit? Is he a cretin now? I want to know that. He's not a cretin, and he is able to do work. If not in his previous leadership role, then as a line detective. I'm ready to lead again. Fuck yeah. I've reclaimed myself, and I'm going to lead us into the gloaming! No one even mentioned that. I misphrased my question. It should have been, is he able to put his clothes on and use the body? Or do we need to get him on a disability pension? I hope I, Do I have a bullet in this gun? <laughs> what now? Now nothing. Now we're just going to stand here. Really? No. Now we discuss that. What the fuck did you do to a motor carriage? Why is it there, Harry? Mate, this is not at all important right now. We're gonna have the dude. We're gonna have a guy who needs urgent medical attention on the other side of that body of water. Who's gonna? Who's going to fucking die and choke on his own vomit if we don't get him medical attention? Okay. I drove it into the ocean when I was drunk. Ah, oh, so refreshing. He just admits it. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you for destroying 45,000 real of police property that's coming out of everyone's payslip. It doesn't matter. <sighs> your badge, Harry. Show me your badge. I got my badge right here. In a rush to demonstrate your badge, your eager fingers can't sustain a grip on the smooth plastic, and the badge slips out of your hand. Catch it. <sighs> you fucking bet. Of course you catch it. 
course you do. Not today, badge. That's right. The drama is unnecessary. I got the badge. All is well. I'm fucking putting these boys in their place. I'm serious as hell today. I'm cool, calm, and collected. No amnesia, no insanity. Everything is going so well. And your gun? I am holding it, and I am so willing to point it at you if you would like me to show it that way. As if having your badge and gun are natural states, not achievements. It's apparently an achievement for Harry. What is it with all these material objects? God, we could totally just, like, the way that, at the beginning of the game, I was so willing to lean into just the silliness that we just completely derail it, but, like, the, the more serious and the more involved you get in this world and the way that the things reveal, reveal themselves in the world, it just enamors you. It's just, like, it's so satisfying to actually not be that bumbling idiot at the beginning now and to actually just have a fucking handle on things and be like, my gun is right here. <sighs> he has it. And he didn't drop it. You're drunk like a berm, Harry. Put that thing away before you kill someone. Uh, I'm not drunk. I haven't started drinking again. Uh, yeah, I've had a, yeah, I've had a little bit. I'm also on drugs. <clears throat> so it doesn't even matter that I found my gun? Look, I didn't lose my gun. I have my gun. We're not talking about the fucking gun anymore. We're talking about the vaporized cloud of ethanol coming from your mouth. No idea what you're talking about. This is so unfair. He knows you have the gun, and still he's punishing you. So, so what? I've had a little drink. A little drink? You smell like a corpse. I'm downwind and I can barely breathe. You smell like shit. It's actually the pheromones from the whole insulinian phasmid thing. It's a whole th We have a photo, so it's a whole thing. You let a suspect escape, Harry. Class year something. Because you were too drunk to assess a flight risk. We have the killer, dude. It's fine. We've read the reports. Lieutenant Kitsuhagis. We know. We're looking at the oxygen holocaust times a quadrillion. Uh, not taking her in was the right thing to do. She gave a vital clue that led us to the island. Oh, well. If she was nice. I'm not even gonna get into the other suspect, who also escaped. Yeah, Ruby something. Yeah, she was gonna blow her brains out otherwise. Or the fact that you're ever a Claire's little peony now, doing I don't know what for him. That's small time stuff. That's nothing. That's a humorous anecdote. Lies. Slander. Compared to the seven people who were gunned down, the streets are literally red with blood, Harry. It was fucking mass murder. Yes, and that's my fault somehow. And not the dude who is behind us. He did everything he could. We did everything we could. The company hired and vetted mercenaries. Lieutenant Dubois could between them and the locals. Here comes the cavalry. That's right, my fucking guy. Back me up now. He did so at considerable risk to his person. Remember, he was shot. We stopped an execution, not a negotiation. The loss of life was minimal compared to what it could have been. I also solved the case. It solved all of it. Detective, it's better if I do that. Okay. It's so much better if he does this. A million times better. And, okay, and that is true. Kim is amazing. Thank you for the input, Lieutenant Kitsuragi. I didn't mean to suggest you didn't handle the situation. <clears throat> You've spent the week with him on this case. What is your take? On um, the case? No, on, on me. On Lieutenant Yeufretor Dubois. Well, the drinking, the last gun, also losing his badge, that's all true. And he's been drinking on the job. The man sighs deeply. Every decision, every single path, every single piece of dialogue, everything that we have done in this game put out on display and thrown back in our face. Every single action is in this moment. Then there's the apocalypse thing. At first I thought it was a joke, but it's not. He actually thinks the world is about to end in a bloodletting or gloaming. We are about to become vapor. Kim you, were, Kim, you were there. You saw the two millimeter hole in the world. You've seen the phasmid. You know. The gloaming is real. And I will lead it. It's worrying. Especially considering his political views. 
Detective Dubois is, as you may know, a Mazovian socio-economist. He's even gotten involved in a highly theoretical underground reading group, which, again, for a police officer, is unusual. Kim, you know you don't have to say this, right? <laughs> you know you could just say he's a great guy and I love him the bits because I he saved my life at the tribunal. You should yell something. That's not a good idea, Rhetoric. You are really letting me down lately. So is Suggestion. My god, my brain is failing me. You're all compromised. Yes, let's let the big boys talk. Yeah, I'm just digging myself my own grave. Other still, he's also an ultra-liberal hustler who is always on the grind. How he reconciles these two points of view, I do not know. But he is vocal about both of them. And then there's the motor carriage in the sea. And the drugs, of course. Amphetamine, mostly. <laughs> but despite all this, he is a great detective. One of the best I have seen, in fact. Guys, hold on to that last part, right? The last part is always the most important part of a story, okay? He's sp span you a yarn, some of it true, but a lot of it hearsay. Uh, there's no, 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 no proof. Uh, but the last part, uh, I think, is actually quite endearing and beautiful and exactly what all of us needed and wanted to hear, okay? Okay? He can talk human beings into telling him everything. And he doesn't stop. In all the time I've spent with him, he has not once stopped pursuing leads, however far-fetched and tangential. He is tireless, madly driven. Well, except that one time when he stopped to sing karaoke, which, by the way, I have to disagree with you, Mr. Vikmar, was a valiant effort. <laughs> he really sang his heart out. Okay, he did something. Other than that one time, he has tirelessly worked on the case, and he solved it. We have a confession, a murder weapon, and the perpetrator, locked on the island right now, awaiting transportation. That's fucking right. He apprehended a revolutionary brigade who stayed hidden for 50 years, ever since the revolution, who's probably committed other murders over those years. Oh, and he also discovered a new species. Yeah, we did. A new species. Get the photo right here. A colossal stick insect. It was on the island, camouflaged as a reed. It uh, unfolded from the reeds. I think we may be dealing with the insulindian phasmid. He takes out the photo of the phasmid and shows it to the officers across the yard. The wind blows, flapping the glossy rectangle in his hand. You hear gasps beneath the howling of the wind. As you can see, it's about three meters tall. In fact, we think it may be the largest land invertebrate ever discovered. Luciana, boom shakal, boom shakal like a motherfucker. Honestly, I want to say that so badly. I'm a pretty okay detective and an absolutely giant communist. Oh, I just really want to say boom shakal like a motherfucker. Fucking hell is that? Is this somehow connected to the case? Potentially. Detective? Kim. <clears throat> yes, I believe the pheromone it emits may be responsible for the killer's mental degradation. The old man was not aware of the phasmid's presence. Exhibiting a strange, atypical dementia, he fell into a stupor after its appearance. He became near catatonic. So it is connected. Got nothing to say now, bitch! I must say this is absolutely extraordinary. It's... I don't even have words for it. <laughs> yes, it really does make it hard to fire the drunk. This is a very, very sad man who has just seen something that's made him forget his sadness. Mm. Mm. Now you make your case. Now is the time. Now or never. Oh man, it's it's everything. So what do you want to say? You want to take this hot shit back? <clears throat> I also started a nightclub in the church. What was that? It sounded like you set up a nightclub in the church. Yeah, and I discovered a um, hitherto unexplored entrepreneurial phenomenon in there too. A two millimeter hole in the world. That's great. Entrepreneur is a great new career for you. After police officer. I don't care. Go live in the pale. 
four kids were living in a tent on the ice. They were going to drown when it melted. It's not optimal, but the building was abandoned, so he put them in there. It's okay. It's not that okay. Okay. Get off this subject now. Uh, also, the phasmid was female. The reeds are its nest. Female? What makes you think so? You had to see it. It had the subdued colors of a female. And the nesting behavior too, I think. Incredible. Were there eggs in the nest? Not as far as I could see. There were other things there, though. It's interesting time. Forget about the rest. It had gathered items in its nest. Behold, a passport. Actually, you know, this would indicate it was a male. This is far from anything in my field, but I think such nests are called bowers. They are for attracting mates. Interesting. Bowers are built by males of the species who can't afford colorful mating displays physically. This one was plain colored. It could have been male, actually. Must be robust if it can move a helmet with its limbs. Move a helmet? Oh, shit. I wonder if this line is referring to... Damn, maybe we missed it or it wasn't there. Move a helmet with its limbs. Is it referring to the helmet that Kuno kicked into the... The ocean, the water? That would make sense. That it would pick up that item that Kuno threw away. Interestingly enough, we didn't discover the helmet. We didn't see it. It could maybe roll it. Like a dung beetle. Huh. I think it reproduces by patho pathogenesis. As in cloning itself. What makes you think so? I'm not... I can't tell you it told me, can I? Um, observation? Well, then it wouldn't matter if it's a male or female. The bower would just be rudimentary behavior from before the parthenogenetic mutation. That makes sense, yes. Very interesting. Such organisms are extremely vulnerable to disease. A single strain of bacteria could wipe out the whole species. We're probably looking at conservation efforts here. I think it emits a chemical that makes it look even more like the reeds. Hmm. Yes. That would be a chiromone. A pheromone that's seemingly beneficial to the host. It usually stimulates the affected nervous system. Not a human's, of course. But perhaps a predator's? The perpetrator seemed uh, intoxicated somehow, like an addict. It's, it's just a hunch, but... There are species of bees that, under the influence of chiromones, take wasp larvae to their hives. Ants do the same with aphids, thinking they're... Do you think this is how it stayed hidden? Nothing is off the table. But uh, I want to stress this. The fine does not have to be connected to the case. The case is 100% prosecutable, without any chiromones. Mm. Of course, Lieutenant. Of course. We should treat the case and the Vasmidas completely separate from each other. People are not going to... Yeah, people are going to be like, what the fuck? They're not going to go for this speculation in the constabulatory. Okay, and it had mandibles that looked like hair, and it was completely white on the inside. Yes, but also reed-colored, beige and brown, a little green on the outside. After unfolding from a single stalk, it still retained parts that looked like reed tufts on its limbs. Incredible. The PR value of this is exceptional. Carp discovers new species. Maybe even discovers the insulindian phasmid. No, no, that's too much. This would really help with some of the uh, problems we've been having. Absolutely, this is great. This does not say vigilante murderers to me at all. This says science, news, human interest. You know, it's a really good thing you have that photo. Ah, uh, yes, otherwise we'll be screwed right now. Without it? Yeah. You're doing good here. Perhaps only for a moment, but still. Quit while you're ahead? Or no? Um, the killer, uh, Lilianovich Dross. We have a strong motive for him. Lilianovich? A revolutionary matronym. A revolutionary matronym? The custom started in Grad, where they have patronyms, Prasovich, Larsovich, etc. The revolutionaries saw this as a chauvinist atavism, so they used matronyms, derived from the mother's name instead. Hmm. This man's mother was Lillian, his Lillian's ah, mother, right. Lilianovich. Yeah. The custom was overturned after the revolution failed, but not before it made it to Revachol. Hmm. So, it is what a soldier of the ICM would be called. 
Thank you, Trant. Thank you for that piece of cultural theory. You said you have a motive? Of course, excuse me. I just thought it was noteworthy. He wasn't quite sure about the straggler before he heard this detail. It must have convinced him. He killed the mercenary in an act of jealousy. Jealousy? I thought this Lilianovich was an old man. <clears throat> he had been hiding for 50 years. Like 70 something. A strange psychosexual fixation. Aggravated, possibly, by proximity to the phasmid and its chemicals. He himself gave a political reason, said he had killed an enemy combatant. Also, we have ballistics from the gun, matching the bullet found in the dead mercenary's head, and two officers on the scene that Mr. Dross confessed to. It's a clean win. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's way more than that. It is. Way, way more. <laughs> <laughs> It'll win me Dora back. They'll teach this in cop school. I did all could. I did all I could. Every second was a struggle. I did all I could. Every second was a struggle. I've never doubted you can pull yourself together and work. In belts, vows don't last. I can still smell the booze on the wind. God damn it! It is bad. Even you can smell it. Pheromones, guys, from from Murray, from Morel. Sorry. Chin up. Keep focusing on the positives here. The previous head of the Debrador's Union was assassinated by our killer. This is a conversation for when we are no longer out in the open. In Martinez, where Everhart and Edgar Claire have ears uh, everywhere. Yeah. Uh, that is true, actually. And eyes, too. Your return from the island must not have gone unnoticed. Yeah. Understood, of course. But a case against Everhart would be big. I would prefer not to partake in anything union-related, for political neutrality. This has to be good stuff for him to backpedal out of it at first mention. Mm. Um, there was also a dead man on the boardwalk, a missing person I found. Yes, yes. Fallen through a gap in a boardwalk. Drunk. How'd you know I found him? The body was transported to Precinct 41, our morgue. I had Tilbrook and Mullins take care of funeral arrangements and uh, family stuff. You're not the only cop in the world, Harry. This all comes back to us. Still, good work with the missing person, detective. It's still a point for you. No denying it. Uh, and I also fixed the strike situation. How? It seems to be ongoing. I see red banners on the gates. He didn't quite solve it. He cross-pollinated information between the company rep and Everhart until the rep came to see that the Union desires war, at which point Mrs. Messier decided to... What? Hand clear the terminal? Yeah, that's actually pretty bad. It was an accident? Kind of? You bet it was. Sounds to me like you got played by Claire. And it's true. You are his little peony. Maybe. Maybe. Certainly. You're Everclaw's peony now, just as I said. He's a mob boss, did you know? Yeah. Is that why you want us to investigate the assassination of the previous Union head thing? To get off Everard's hook? No. No, it's nothing like that. He was reckless with information, but ethical. We don't owe anyone anything. This allowed us to stabilize things in Martinez. I really like how much Kim has my back at, uh, at all of these things. I love this man. God, calm down, Jean. Exactly. Silence. Good. The man doesn't know what to say. Uh, I also looked into the mystery of the doomed commercial area. I don't know what a doomed commercial area is. Uh, the curse turned out to be possibly entrepreneurial, part of my larger investigation into Martinez itself. No, we didn't. It didn't turn out to be anthropological again. Enough with the solary pale two millimeter hole in the world line. This isn't Paradox B. We're a police force. I got evidence, baby. Paradox B is a fringe science magazine published in Grad. Its mission is to explain theories like telekinesis and intra-isolary power before they get out of hand. It doesn't look like the lieutenant wishes you to push this angle further. Yeah. Cut it out is indeed what he is thinking. 
Uh, look, I'm not going to mention the Kuno's uh, dad thing. Because I also gave drugs to Kuno. Nobody needs to know that. Uh, so what do you say? Want to take this uh, hot shit back? I don't want to, but you discovered the new species and solved the murder. Uh, yeah, I did. So I have to. Jude. Honestly, anything that ends this trial is okay with me. But he's been drinking, she thinks. This is exactly how he gets out of this every time. It's bad for him, but... Agreed. The public relations potential of this is too valuable to let go. Okay. We have vehicles in the square, and the perpetrator needs to be taken into custody. Let's go. Yeah, and he needs medical attention. We've been wasting a lot of time here, boys. Now. Now you will finally get to know who you are. Wait. I have a few questions before we go about who I am. The man looks westward, impatiently, jingling his car keys in his pocket. Interesting. Final questions, as my thoughts beg to be read. <laughs> as my thoughts are begging to be read. Should I put my final skill points into stuff while I'm while I'm here? Let's have our let's just have our first let's just get one skill point to ten. Finally. Let's do that. Let's get one to ten. And another authority check. I'm feeling authoritative right now. Who am I? Who are you? You're a gym teacher, Harry. What? Well, obviously you're not a gym teacher anymore, but... But before? Before you were a cop, you were a gym teacher in Coron. It's getting really cold outside. Should we maybe... No way. I was a revelator. Learned in ancient art. Eh, that does explain a lot. I'm super athletic and strong. Harry, it explains everything. The running around, the jumping, the bicep girth, <laughs> your inexplicable facial hair. The collection of found sportswear I've amassed. The fact that you don't seem to know what homosexuality is, and your moves on the church floor, which <laughs> honestly were just jump aerobics. Oh man, every single piece of dialogue in Chosen Pathways really winds into this, which is f like mind-blowingly detailed. Also, this guy just Everything about this guy. Everything about this guy. And this guy, too. Oh, yeah. God, even this javelin throwing freak here. Oh, God, contact Mike. Of course. Contact Mike. He's been on about Mike again. <laughs> I hate that guy. <laughs> contact Mike is a reprise of the most inspiring basic sporting principle of open competition, a 5,000 to 1 rank outsider. Oh, you don't say. Does he also vault an impassable girl for finance and privilege? It is... It is getting cold out. <laughs> She's just going to keep you like, it's, it's cold. Why are you still asking questions? <sighs> when was this? When was I a gym teacher? There's just so much dialogue to be obtained. Come on. In your 20s or late 20s, you've really let yourself go since then. You said in Kuron? I was a gym teacher there. Yes, you taught gym in Kuron. I believe that's the term. Taught gym at a high school. You were a high school gym teacher. The smell of sweat and glue. The worn floorboards. Kuron is just east of Jamro. It was a short walk every morning to the baseball field or the sports building. High school. Harry, your goings on with Kuno, Andre, Asel, the whole thing on the ice. That's why you are so juvy. <laughs> His smirk suggests barely contained laughter. Okay, so why did I join the RCM then? The regular. You found some chick. She inspired you to fight the big fight. Be more than you are. All that. Oh. You, every morning, walking from Voyager Road to teach gym. She, leaving for the academy with her spring coat on. The air filled with the smell of smoke and raspberries and incredible hope. An ocean full of hope. Okay, I see now. I knew it. I knew no normal human being can run like that. He's an honest-to-God gym teacher. Why am I like this? It's not a mystery. Some chick fucked you over. Also, you were drunk. You really went with it too. Really maximized the damage. Was she called Dora Dubois? Dubois? It was Dora Ingeland, I think. You've said her name, but you weren't married. You were engaged. Oh, we were engaged. Wait, Dora Ingeland? Something like that. Half Vazan. Vasa is where beautifully and impossibly blonde <laughs> Beautifully and impossibly blonde people come from. So we weren't even married. No one is married anymore. This is Revachol. When was this? 
God, I don't know. Six years ago, Six years. she was way before my time. Six years and you haven't gotten <laughs> over it. What the hell is wrong with you? That's a long time, dude. Six years? Yeah, or seven. You're not doing too good there. It's an old man thing. <laughs> Two old years equals one no more year. That and Durangalon really tore you a new one. A big one. That's why we were about there was another option to say three years instead of six, because two old years equates uh, one normal year. Um, who was she? Incredibly bangable. Oh, thank, thank you. Uh, yeah, figures. Extremely fuckable, Harry. Gorgeous, a gorgeous bourgeois woman, wavyish, like a welkin, basically. Thank you for the description, Jean. I, I nailed a baddie, and I'm grateful for it. Snow. Blonde Wilkin. Heartbreak Wilkin. <laughs> Pain. Wilkin. Stop! I've only seen a picture, but it's obvious you formed a real spiritual connection with how pretty she was. One you never recuperated from. Look, the sun is going down. It's time to go on. I think she taught in the Académie des Arts, east of the river. Way east. Hard to say which came first, the middle class cheek or the drink. <laughs> Egg and the chicken kind of thing. Okay. My point is, you need to see a psychiatrist about this shit. Not a psychologist. Several degrees harder. Yeah. Is there something harder than a psychiatrist? A forensic psychiatrist? Go talk to that. Yeah. In other words, he's heard enough about this. Okay. Am I a dirty cop working for Laputa Madre? No. No? Because a suspect seemed to think... You're too unstable to work for a mob boss. You're suicidal, Harry. No mob boss would take you. The words came out of your own mouth. See, I'm not Everard Claire's peony. The words came out of your mouth. I assure you, I wouldn't consult for a corrupt unit. Yeah. He would immediately backpedal out of it. That he would. I told you it's not that bad. Nice. Precinct 41, what kind of station is it? Us. We're the bloody murder station, haven't you heard? With the bad guys, no one likes us. Well, I mean, I don't like you, so I mean, it's, uh, it checks out. That's not true. Jamrock is too big for one precinct. You are just understaffed. And everyone respects the 41st. You have Captain Price. Captain Price? Thank you, Lieutenant. You're being kind. It is an understaffed station and the district is too big. Which is why we need to... Stop losing our, our good members. Get back to it. We left Torson and McLean to run the Sea Wing. It's not good. Torson and McLean? Mac the Torso Torson and Chester McLean. They're not fit to run a wing. Believe me, things are shaky as it is. <laughs> they are damn iconic, though, Torson and McLean. Um, is this like a is this a Die Hard reference? Um, I've never seen a Die Hard movie, but I know of what is it? John McLean? Does he have a partner called Torson? I've never seen Die Hard. Don't come at me. All right. You guys have seen my gaming backlog. It's massive, and I'm really working through games. I'm uncultured, but also I wasn't allowed to watch certain movies and play certain games growing up as a kid. I was heavily moderated, all right? And then I just never got around to watching Die Hard. Let's just leave it at that. But all I do know that Die Hard is apparently a Christmas movie, and there's a, Bruce Willis plays John McClane, I think. And uh, that's it. I have basically seen the movie. I feel like this is a Die Hard reference. An iconic duo, I take it? Yeah. Not like us. Two clinically depressed old men. Where's the contrast here? We are garbage. Hot, sexy garbage, though. And the sea wing is... God. There are four wings, Harry. A, B, C, and D. We're in C. It's made of losers and clock punchers. You and I reconceptualized it as a task force. It was a mistake. We gotta rearrange those letters, dude. To BDCA, big damn cock ass. There's also a lot of outside help involved, not only me, other losers too. He's anything but a loser, although he would like to be seen as well. And Price is, uh, Price is? Ptolemy Price? Ptolemy He's the Price. son of the old Price, one of the founders of the RCM. Ooh, cool. He's one of the most highly regarded men in the force. You're lucky. Mm. Somewhere under the curved roof of a former silk factory shaped like a ladybird with two chimneys, police captain Ptolemy Price sits behind a heavy wooden desk. Resident medic Nix Gottlieb pours him coffee 
it's silent in the captain's office. They speak of change, the city, the tension on the streets. They speak of the events of April and the blood on the streets in May. Fuck, we can talk about this. The shooting up the church thing. Did we recently shoot up a church by any chance? So he remembers that. Yes, there may have been a raid on some churches. It wasn't good press. Shooting up churches never is. I was out of town, to be clear. <sighs> what happened? Why did we need to go there? Our enemies were hiding in a church, to the best of our information. That's it. I'm not talking about this anymore. Your security clearance is shit tier right now. You have to wait for it to go up. He means it. The RCM and its enemies will not be discussed on this coast. Your clearance will not go up while you're within earshot of the Union headquarters. It makes sense. So I work in the bloody murder station? Okay. It's not the bloody murder station. It's an old converted silk mill with green desk lamps and a coffee corner. A lot of good people work there. Hard. Every day. Jamrock is the largest ghetto in Rivershall. Forbog, technically, but uh, it's divided into 11 districts. Jamrock only as us. The press will blow over. Jamrock is lucky to have you. And it's often considered to be the greatest of the districts. You're lucky to have it. Thank you again, Lieutenant. Man, this is so cool. Like, genuinely, they could easily just make... What, what, I, th what I think I love about this is uh, a sequel to a, a detective RPG is is so feasible. It's because it's you've already you have the first game, you have that all that world building, that establishment. All you have to do in a detective RPG is just have another case. And that's the that's the great thing about games like this that are like detective based stories or crime based stories or mysteries because there's there's always another one. And I I would love a, di a Disco Elysium 2 that can just do this again but differently that would be it would be so crazy uh just like thinking about like all these other characters that you can interact with in a different location like oh man the potential um the potential i i am so excited to see what comes next out of this world because um it definitely has uh potential to do that um the phasmid i need to tell lena about this asap yes who is lena the cryptozoologist she lives at 1113 Tabernacle Road in Jamrock, remember? Mm-hmm. A cryptozoologist. She lives in Jamrock on Tabernacle Road. She told me about the phasmid. Tabernacle? It's on the way over. Near where you live on Perdition. Yay. Fine. If we're gonna drop you off anyway. Nice. She and her husband were conducting the search for the phasmid. It's their discovery, in part. Yeah, we owe pretty much all of it to them. They should know as soon as possible. It would do you good to deliver some positive news for a change. I'm so happy about what that's going to do for their relationship. She is going to be over the moon. Oh, yeah. Watch out or she'll faint. Yeah, we need to deliver this carefully. <laughs> Lieutenant Kitsuragi, what will you do now? Well, first I will go back to my station and mm -hmm. write the most detailed report anyone has ever seen. It will have to be good to cover all these. Then I will have a serious talk with my captain. A serious talk? Kim, are you gonna ask to be my partner? Are you gonna resign from your precinct and come over to the 41st? You're gonna be my permanent partner? That's the, that's the only serious talk you should have with your captain, that you wanna be my partner, right? Detective, we just stopped a small-scale war. Something is happening to Revachol. He pulls up his collar and looks around, the cold spring light reflected in the lenses of his glasses. I don't know what yet. But it's going to be a hard spring for the RCM. Oh, we need to get ready. Infiltrate. Investigate. Sequel! 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 Distant traffic. A scrap of newspaper drifts by, carried by the wind. Yes! Do you want to do that at Station 41? Talk to Captain Price? I'd rather not ruffle the feathers of two captains with my doom mongering. No, I meant investigate. Come work at Precinct 41. Work with Price? I'm flattered, but I don't know if I... Would fit him. And crazy enough. Can take the stress. He doesn't know how to finish the sentence. Be my buddy cop. This truly came as a surprise to him. Not a bad one. But he's at a loss. Flattered? You're no Kitsuragi. We would be flattered if you even considered. Yeah. I would have to tie things up in GRIH first. But... I mean, whatever is coming, Jamrock will be more central to it than the harbour. 
And we also have a huge caseload, Lutnon. Piles that we need to get back to. Mountains, even. That's right, baby. Disco Elysium saga. Let's go. I do like the sound of that. Yeah. He's really considering it. Yes! All right, I'm ready. Good. She looks at you, then Vic Meyer. Fuck it, let's go. <laughs> Trump brought his motor carriage. It's a 20 minute drive to Jamrock. Under the evening sky, the great district turns on its lights. A chessboard of wooden houses, 80,000 living souls inside. Fire traps as far as the eye can see, from Main Street to Precinct 41 atop the motorway, to Boogie Street forking into the dark horizon. You close your eyes and hear the dogs bark. A lone woman sits by a factory window, dreaming of meteorite strikes. On Rue de saint Jérôme, a square bullet slides into a square-shaped chamber. In Old South, a man without eyelids smiles. Spring has come. It's time. Dawson? Yes. McLean? Yes. Heidelstam? No. Vicmer? Yes. Dubois? Of course. Really? Nick Scott Lee looks out from the list. I hear he's unstable. You say that like it's a bad thing. Captain Potomney Price gestures with a ballpoint pen. It's dim in his office and the curtains are drawn. Harry's our man. He'll pull through. When he does, he'll side with the people. Understood. Gottlieb returns to the list. Minnow? Of course. Wonderful. Then can we please just go back to Jamrock now? End. Oh, Pat and Kim on the shoulder, man. Let's go. And the handshake. Yeah. Kim, hop in, dude. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Oh, we get. I'm getting a handshake from this fucker. Let's go. Oh, he's help. Okay, he's helping me limp back to the carriage. Still a dickhead. Those car. Just pretend those cars. Car doors actually opened. Yep, they definitely opened. <laughs> just RCM have the special ability to be able to go through physical objects like that. Dude, let's go. Disco Elysium is over! Oh my god, dude. Straight up. 10 out of 10. 11 out of 10. Honestly, that's one of the best video games, best experiences I've ever had the sheer pleasure of going through. That was, that was so good, guys. That was so good. This game was fantastic. It was fantastic, and I've had to split this ending episode into two parts because in total, from the Sea Fortress to now with the credits rolling, I've recorded for over four hours, so I had to, I've definitely have to split this one into two parts. I didn't think it would like, you know, I just went and it just kept going and it just, like I said, there's just so much dialogue to get in and it's, it's amazing. So rewarding. It was just crazy to be at the end like that and just having every single minor decision and choice really come back to slap us in the face. But we, we pulled through cause we did some really fucking good detective work. We just did some shitty things to get there. And like, it just makes the idea of replays so enticing to just be like, like, what can you do? Uh, what can you do and not do uh, to lead up to that final point? You know, I'm, I'm very excited in flipping the script entirely to have a very physical and agile detective instead of a very uh, intellectual and psyche based detective. Just go full physique and motorics um, and then just be full on uh, authoritative like you know just like as as much as possible just like be straight up serious from the beginning uh, and change your political ideals and just have a completely different time and it just like yeah it's crazy how much you can like mix and, and change with your whole character's personality and what you choose to uh, interact with but this is one of the 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 deepest 
uh, RPG experiences I've ever had. The sheer amount of voice acting in this game blows me away. Like, it's all voice acted. It's, it's all voice acted, and that effort is commendable. I know that the final cut added vo more voice acting. Um, absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Look at this. The voice acting of the ancient reptilian brain, limbic system, and the spinal cord is all the same. And did Bird's Nest Roy, and, um, and dude, the, the voices. Amazing. Amazing voices. It's crazy to see how much um, some people um, voice, like, multiple, multiple characters, but this was... Yeah, <laughs> this was so amazing. I just, I, I just can't even believe it. I'm, I'm so, I'm so pleased, and I love that the, the, the like, it's, it's just like to go on the cryptozoologist journey throughout the course of the game and to believe in it, to believe in it, and hope that something actually comes of it, uh, only to be uh, let down uh, temporarily. You know what I mean? Temporarily let down. Um, before you get to the end of the game and it's tied to the murder, it's tied to the case, like, it just is, is crazy, it's just crazy, you know, like, it's poisonous, <laughs> and it, like, affected his, his brain, but, like, uh, it was really funny what I was talking about with, um, it being a very realistic and grounded situation where it's just, like, it just ends up just being this fucking dude. And it is, still, even with the Phasmid connection, like, without that Phasmid connection, it's still there, because he still had those feelings, it's just that there was some neurodegenerativeness going on with the Phasmid as well, or was there, you know? At the, at the moment, there's very, there's true clear ways you can pin that sort of motive, is it was, uh... A side effect from the Phasmid's existence, um, and that only intensified his feelings that were already there anyway, um, or it was just him, just uh, taking his anger out. Um, both options, just amazing. This, yeah, I, I cannot, and I, I cannot stress this enough that this is one of the best games that I have ever played. It's, it's incredible, and I will sing its praises until I die. <laughs> like, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm blown away. I'm blown away. This is a, this is a masterpiece of, of writing, of storytelling, of music, of characters, like, everything. The art style, incredible. The thought cabinet, all of the attention to detail in constructing that abstract thought cabinet? Incredible. My, my life has been changed by this game, and it's not even a joke. I walk around... Uh, I walk around during the daytime when I leave the house and I and I'm like oh my god I can't stop thinking about Disco Elysium like I imagine that I am walking around my own city as if I'm walking around the streets of Martinez and Interacting with people is a uh, dialogue trees and lists and it's 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 wild because the game is so Fleshed out in such a such a way that it just it really sings to me uh, This is way more than a video game it's way more than a video game, and it shows, like, uh, the, the the level of detail, the storytelling, the world building, the establishing how this world works, and the rules that you play by, um, it's it's masterfully done. I cannot wait to see what this what these developers do next. This being their first game, uh, they're off to a very strong start, and I cannot wait to see a sequel, uh, a new game, anything that comes from this. Genuinely, <laughs> like... This has just been, this has just been such a good experience. It's uh, it's almost 1 a.m. and I've just been straight playing this for the past like almost four and a half hours, and I am just ecstatic. I am absolutely, absolutely ecstatic. I'm just gonna be listening to the soundtrack now, I think, and just going through that and just really like reminiscing, reminiscing on this game. We're gonna let the we're gonna let the the credits roll. As we're in the localization section, we're going to let the credits roll. We'll get to the end, and then we'll uh, we'll give our final closing thoughts. And there it is. We're back to the we're back to the title screen. We're back to Disco Elysium, right at the beginning. And we see we see Martinez. We see Rivershaw. We see a beautiful painted landscape for us to reflect on. That's it. Oh wow, thank you so much for watching the Disco Elysium playthrough. Uh, I am I'm so glad that I finally got to play it. Um, it was recommended to me when the Final Cut was releasing, uh, around this time last year, like a, a few months ago, last year now. Um, and as soon as uh, it was suggested to me, like, hey, this game is a masterpiece, it's like genuinely, 
uh, amazing. Uh, everything across the board is uh, is incredible. It's one of the best games, one of the best RPGs, CRPGs ever made. Uh, I like everyone sung praise that had experienced this game recommending it to me um and not a single negative comment uh i've i've read about or seen about this game uh like which is which is amazing so with a couple of very high praise suggestions um that was on my list and it took me it took me a year to finally free up the time and to to put it on and and play it but i've been waiting to play it ever since that that suggestion and i'm just so so glad that i think i, I think i played it at the, at the at the perfect time um i think i played it at the perfect time because uh i've i've certainly developed my my play style and my abilities um in particular in particular ways um over the course of these past um two and a bit years doing doing youtube stuff that i'm, I'm very grateful that i have I've left it to to now because i've uh yeah, I've definitely been able to refine refine some more of like a detailed a approach to some some things more so than I used to in my first year or so. So um, I I've, I genuinely have had the, the the best time, and I hope you guys have too. Like I really appreciate the the love and support that I've got on this on this let's play and um, this experience, and because I I know that there's a lot of passion and a lot of love uh, for this game, and I and all that I can say is that uh, for you that I I hope that I've done it justice, uh, and I hope that you guys. Uh, feel like you haven't wasted your time like joining me on this journey and going through it and you've you've loved being along this with me because i've enjoyed every single second of of this game and um yeah i'm just gonna go and ab absorb this and sing its praises and spread the good word of disco elysium like it was spread to me uh because everyone needs to play and buy this game like i cannot even stress that Everyone needs to play this game, and if you have enjoyed watching the playthrough and haven't played it, play it for yourself, because it will still be just as rewarding to play it differently. So, with that one, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you haven't already, and you're still watching at this point, uh, please do like, comment, and subscribe. I am going to leave that one at the end, because your support means everything to me, and it's why I'm here. So, uh, thank you so much for watching the playthrough of Disco Elysium. I love you all so much, and I'll see you in the next video.